What I have here in front of me is what can only be described as an absurd amount of photo books. I wanted to make a video earlier this year during the summer just sharing some of the books I picked up over the summer. And that stack of books just continued to grow and I kept putting the video off and now here we are. I want to give you sort of a rapid fire roundup of the books that I've picked up this year. I believe this is all of the books I've picked up this year. I could be missing a couple, but there's plenty to talk about here. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to go in depth with each book because we would be here all day, but I'm going to share a little bit from each book and just tell you a little bit about it. And if you're interested in seeing like an in-depth or full flip through of any of these books, let me know in the comments down below and I can do one of these for photo book Friday. As a matter of fact, I've done some of these books already on the Photo Book Friday series, which I'll go ahead and talk about briefly before we get started. If you're not familiar, um, for the last couple of months, every Friday, I upload a new Photo Book Friday episode where I give you just a full flip through from start to finish, cover to cover, uh, just taking a look at one of the books in my collection. There is no audio, no commentary or dialogue or thoughts of my own, no music nothing at all and that's very intentional i've gotten some comments and messages from people thinking that something messed up in the file when i uploaded it and that there was no audio uh, that's very intentional i enjoy making videos where i just kind of flip through some books talk about the books i like and why i like them and what i get out of them uh, and i'll still continue to do that kind of like we're doing today uh, but with photo book friday i wanted to do something a little bit different where there's no subjective bias i'm not you know, kind of steering the viewer into any direction when they're looking at the work, they can just see the entire book start to finish and make their own interpretation and get their own out of it. Um, I didn't want to add any music because that can also influence how you view work. Um, if you want to listen to music while you watch the videos, you're welcome to do that. Um, a lot of people have asked, uh, why not do sort of like an ASMR where you hear the page turn and everything in the paper? Um, I get that idea for sure, but the reality is I batch record these at a time just whenever I get a chance to. And oftentimes I have my office door open so my kids can come in and I can, you know, kind of keep them busy and they can talk to me. So usually while I'm recording those videos, I'm having a conversation with my kids or you hear kids running and screaming and that kind of stuff. So uh, it's intentional that there is no audio in the photo book Friday episodes. Um, those videos are just as a way to share the collection. I don't have any ads. There's no monetization on those videos. So as far as I know, there's no copyright issues there because it should be under fair use. Um, if you have any more information on that, let me know. But the whole goal is just to share this work with people, especially books that maybe aren't in print anymore. Oftentimes my YouTube upload schedule is pretty sporadic and I just make the videos when I get a chance to and I upload them as often as I can. Um, however, it's never really consistent. So at the very least, even if I'm busy and I don't have time to film and upload a video in any given week, at the very least, there's a photo book Friday episode going up every week. So that way you get to see a new book. So that's more than enough talking about the photo book Friday series. If you're interested, there's a playlist on the channel where you can see everything. But let's take a look at some of the books that I've picked up this year. I guess we're just going to work our way down the stack here. And what better way to get started than with Kyle Miles, So Many Beautiful Reasons, published by Smog Press. Kyle is one of my very dear friends, um, Baltimore Photo Space. I talk about him in pretty much every book video. It's where I bought most of these. Uh, Kyle and Tori of Baltimore Photo Space. This is Kyle. Beautiful color work made around his mom's garden. There are pictures of his mom, his family members, all kind of sharing and occupying that space. Kyle's always had a beautiful way of composing images, uh, some things that make you feel like you're actually in his point of view. And there's just such a calm and comforting kind of feeling to this book and a nice pace to it as well. It's a nice kind of slow read as you're going through it. And there's also a wonderful essay at the end of the book, a little short story to accompany it. The way this was all put together, it's just amazing. Just couldn't be more excited for Kyle on how this turned out and for this to be out in the world now. Uh, just a wonderful human, great person. Uh, make sure you're supporting Baltimore Photo Space for all of your photo book needs. 
Up next, Nothing Changes If Nothing Changes by Ed Pinar. This is a zine put out by The Ice Plant, I believe like a decade ago. Uh, so this isn't anything new, but Molly surprised me with this. Um, one of my best friends, Kevin, he let her know that this is something I would really enjoy, and sure enough, it's amazing. As you see on the cover here, nothing changes if nothing changes. When you flip that over, you see the same thing on the other cover. It's a really interesting book the way it's put together. You're going to have a sequence on the right hand side as you flip through it, but you're going to be seeing another sequence here in the bottom left that's going to be upside down. As you flip through this, you're not only going to be seeing, you know, a sequence from these photos from page to page, but looking at the spread, you can also kind of draw comparisons and make connections with these. When you flip through all the way to the end, flip it over, start over again and see the previously upside down images uh, right side up. It's just a really interesting way to kind of play around with pictures and see all of the different ways that the work connects together. Um, just a really interesting concept and uh, something that's a lot of fun to flip through. Up next, this is The Polaroid Kid by Mike Brody, uh, published by Stanley Barker. If you saw uh, Polly B's video recently, I made a little guest appearance. We finally got to hang out in uh, Atlanta a couple weeks ago. Polly's an awesome dude. It was so much fun to finally get to hang out in person with him. I talked about this book in that video. Um, this is a book. Um, it's a collection of reproduced Polaroids. You have this little cardboard box here that has a little rubber band to kind of keep it all together. But you have these reproduced Polaroids where not only the front of the Polaroid has been scanned, but also the back as well and it's just a loose box of Polaroids. There is something so satisfying about seeing Polaroid work this way because this is how oftentimes we're experiencing Polaroids in the real world. We're just shuffling through a stack of them. And all of this was made, you know, after basically just hopping on a train and traveling at a young age. He found a Polaroid camera, started shooting with it. And it's just an awesome random assortment of images that were made just while traveling. And I think the way it's all put together is just genius. I wish I would have thought of that. Um, it's just awesome. I'd never seen anything like this be, you know, released in this form. And uh, it was done extremely well. The way it's printed, the material material used. Um, it's just awesome. So Mike Brody, the Polaroid kid, unlike anything else I'm going to have here in this video today and really anything else in my collection. So definitely check this one out, especially if you're into instant film. Next up, we've got Strange Hours, Photography, Memory, and the Lives of Artists, Selected Writings by Rebecca Bingle. Uh, Rebecca Bingle is the author of the essay In the End of Juggling is Easy by Peggy Nolan, which is one of my favorite books of all time, and I loved her essay. So when I saw she had put out this book with Aperture of some of her writing, I immediately picked it up. Um, I do actually know how to read words as well. It's not all just picture books, um, but this is great so far. I haven't finished it yet, but I've been really enjoying this one. Uh, she's a great writer. So check this one out if you want to have something to read. Next up is I Can Feel You Dreaming by Taylor Galloway, published by Deadbeat Club. Great black and white work, really interesting kind of sequence, almost feels like a dream in a way. Uh, there's some normal kind of everyday subtle moments and then just some bizarre moments as well. The way it's all sequenced together, uh, this makes for a really fun flip through and one that I've kind of returned to a few times and get sort of a different interpretation each time. So this is definitely a fun one. County Road by Brian Schutmott. I won't say too much. This is another book I mentioned in that video with Polly, and I've also done a Photo Book Friday episode on this book. So if you want to see more of it, there's a whole video on the channel already as a complete flip through. But one of my favorites of the year so far. Um, really, really good. Big River by Patrick O'Dell, published by Deadbeat Club. Uh, if you're a skateboarder, epically latered, that's something you're well familiar with. Uh, Patrick O'Dell's photos, him and Heath Kirchart traveling. Uh, just a fun sort of documentary snapshot kind of book. Feels like a personal kind of photo diary in a way. It's a lot of fun, and if you're a skateboarder or have been a skateboarder at any time, uh, Heath Kirchart traveling, you, you gotta get this one. 
Next up is Natural Surroundings by Morton Erickson. Uh, Morton actually reached out to me and wanted to do a book swap where he sent me one of his books and I sent him one of mine. Uh, really glad he did. When he reached out and I saw what the work was, very, you know, everyday kind of black and white landscapes. It's right up my alley. So uh, this is a really fun one as well. And uh, Morton, I hope you're enjoying my book as well. Next up is You Will Look to the Mountains by Anne Rierick. This is another book by Deadbeat Club. These are pictures that Anne made on recurring visits to this family in eastern Kentucky. I believe in the late 80s, early 90s, around that time frame. Uh, pictures she made just in their everyday life, on their farm. Really beautiful black and white stuff here. The compositions are amazing, especially the 6x6 stuff I really, really enjoy. Uh, but just beautiful, quiet, and intimate photos of this family on her visits. Really, really great stuff. Next up is Intermission by Michael Watson, also known as Brain Buster. You might have seen me wearing Brain Buster shirts before. That's Mike. Uh, Mike's one of my really good friends, and he's recently been hired as a photographer for AEW, All Elite Wrestling. So super excited for Mike. He's been shooting pro wrestling for a long time, as long as I've known him. And to see him doing it on such a big scale now is just the coolest thing. Uh, but this is a book of all sorts of uh, portraits that he shot of pro wrestlers over the years. If you're a pro wrestling fan, this is absolutely one to have. To Know You Now and Then by Linda Moses, another book that I've done a Photo Book Friday episode on. One of my favorites this year, for sure. Um, beautiful book that she's made about her parents. If you want to see more on this one, definitely check out that video. But this is one of my favorites for this year, for sure. Getting into some bigger books now. We've got 10 Miles West by Josh Edgoose, one of the co-hosts of Framelines. So uh, I actually have the original version of this book that he published years ago. To see this now published by Satanta Books in such a beautiful format, amazing cover. Uh, I love Josh's work. His use of color has always been what stood out to me about his work. And to see it reproduced this way in such a nice format, um, it's just great. Super happy for Josh and Satanta for putting this out there. Uh, really, really love his work. Lee Friedlander Framed by Joel Cohen. I've also done this on Photo Book Friday, so if you want an in-depth look at this entire book and see some incredible composition by Lee Friedlander, uh, this is definitely one to check out. The book is huge, the printing is great, and uh, I really, really enjoy this one. Coming and Going by Jim Goldberg. This is a massive, massive book, and I'm going to be doing a full video on this book itself. Probably not a Photo Book Friday video, but a video where I kind of discuss and talk more in depth about the book because there's a lot to get into here. Uh, just from a quick glance, you can see it's really interesting how it's put together. It feels very intimate, very much like a personal scrapbook in a lot of ways. Um, this is a really interesting one, one that we'll dig into more on the channel, so I won't give away too much, but coming and going, Jim Goldberg, uh, what a book. Everything I'm Trying to Tell You by Greg Hunt. This is a collection of Greg's color work over the years, and it's really interesting when you find a photographer that you're used to seeing all of their work in black and white to see what they've shot in color, especially as a collection like this. Uh, some really, really beautiful stuff throughout Greg's entire life. There are photos made that are decades apart. Um, it's just a really nice collection as, as well if you're a skateboarder or if you're a fan of Greg's already. Um, this is obviously one to get. Jason Lee's latest book, TX to CA-17, or Texas to California. This was all work he made on a road trip going from Texas to California in 2017, all 6x6 six six black and white film. And uh, he's also putting out a book made going on that same route in reverse, and it's going to be in color. I don't know if it was made in 2017, you know, the same year that this was, but he's working on that book, so it'll be interesting once that comes out to see the two, you know, side by side. Um, but classic 6x6 six six black and white work. Uh, this is a great one to have if you're into the whole kind of road trip photography through America. Um, this is a great one really sticking with skateboarding. Another one, another legend in skateboarding, Ed Templeton. This is Wires Crossed. This is, I think, the book that most skateboarders, most fans of Ed Templeton, this is the book we've been waiting for for so long. This is all of the years and miles of traveling he made while being a pro skateboarder, while running Toy Machine. Um, Ed's work is like no other. His documentary work, he's one of the 
main reasons I was interested in buying a Leica M6 in the first place from years and years ago, well over a decade ago of seeing him shooting with one. That was, I think, when it first kind of popped up on my radar. Um, Ed is incredible. And to have all of his skateboarding work and the stories and the way he puts his pictures and words together, it's just incredible. Another really cool thing he did with the inside cover of the book is he made these sort of special edition stickers for certain photo book stores. So I bought this from Baltimore Photo Space. So this was the design he came up with specifically for the copies that were going to Baltimore Photo Space. Uh, just anything like that to go the extra mile. Um, as an artist, Ed is just incredible. So um, again, if you're a skateboarder, a fan of Ed Templeton, I think this is like the book of his you've got to own. A couple of books here I picked up on my trip to Brooklyn. I've kind of shared about them already. Fred Herzog, Black and White. I've pretty much always been a fan of his color work. So to see a book all on his Black and White, I had to pick that one up. As well as The Pleasure of Seeing. This is a book with conversations with Joel Meyerowitz. Just kind of reflecting on his career and the many years he's had being a photographer. So a lot of good insight in this one. He has a new book coming out uh, kind of comparing... I think it's called like the question of color, something like that, where he's kind of comparing the idea of choosing black and white or choosing color. Super excited to pick that one up as well, but the pleasure of seeing this is a nice read as well. From Where They Came by Catherine Tursan or Turksan. I apologize, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce the name. Um, this is a book of her Ukrainian family on trips that she would make to visit her family hearing their stories, getting to know more about her family. Uh, really, really beautiful black and white work. This was put out by Stanley Barker. Um, as a matter of fact, my good friend Aaron Harden, he did an entire video just about this book that I'll link down below. Um, Aaron's great. I always love hearing his thoughts as he's going through photo books on his channel as well. So if you like these videos, definitely check out Aaron's channel. Um, but yeah, from where they came, beautiful black and white work. And uh, it's nice to see any sort of thing where people are digging into their own family's history. I love that kind of stuff. Rivers Run Through It by Mark Ruedel. Um, this is probably one of the most recent books, so I haven't spent a lot of time with this one yet, uh, but it's landscape shot around Los Angeles, and that's something I don't normally uh, think of when I think of Los Angeles are landscapes like this, but it's the kind of stuff I'm naturally drawn to, so I was really interested to pick this one up. Uh, again, I haven't spent much time with this one yet, but so far from what I've seen just as a quick flip through, uh, it's definitely up my alley. Day for Night by Toshio Shibata. This is published by Deadbeat Club as well. Um, I had heard a lot about his work in years past, but had never picked up any of his books. So when I saw Deadbeat Club was releasing a new one of his, I went ahead and picked it up. Really enjoy this one. A lot of large format black and white work. Some long exposures at night with really, really detailed images. Uh, beautiful compositions as well. I definitely want to pick up more books of his after seeing this one. Um, but as an introduction to his work, I do really enjoy this one. And last, but most certainly not least, Robert Adams, Los Angeles Spring. This is a massive book of what feels like a big box of really nice, well-made prints. Uh, the printing in this book is incredible, and the size of it, they do the work justice. I've been becoming a bigger and bigger Robert Adams fan over just the last couple of years. He was oddly one of those photographers that I had heard so much about, but never really took the time to dive into their work up until just a couple of years ago. And since then, I've added more and more books of his to the collection. Um, just beautiful, simple, classic black and white work. The kind of stuff I think most of us would just love to be able to do. And it seems so effortless to him or just the way things come together. Um, just beautiful work. And again, for his work, especially uh, reproduced in a book like this, this is just incredible. So finally, those are the books that I've picked up this year. At least most of them. I could be missing a couple, but... I've picked up a lot of books this year, as I usually do, and I enjoy sharing them with you all in these videos. Um, YouTube reminds me every time I upload a book video that uh, fewer viewers are choosing to watch this one. So if you watch the book videos and you enjoy them, just know I really appreciate that because I get a lot out of photo books and sharing the books. And uh, even if the algorithm is going to punish me for it, I still find it worth it. So I appreciate all of you watching these videos. And uh, sometime, hopefully at the end of the year, 
here, I will have my own book up on my site. That will be up for pre-order, so we're getting closer and closer to getting that finalized and ready to go. And uh, I'll have more updates as things are getting closer there. But that'll be on my website at mattdayphoto.com, which was made with today's sponsor, Squarespace. When I first created mattdayphoto.com 10 years ago, I did it with Squarespace. This was long before they ever decided to sponsor my channel, but I chose Squarespace because it was just a no-brainer. They had everything I needed in one place, and all these years later, they're still continuing to build and add new features to their service, all while keeping it extremely easy to use while you do it yourself. Drag and drop customization, tons of different templates to choose from, along with 24-7 award-winning customer service that are always there when you need them. You can share your work there, have a place where people can contact you or even schedule appointments. You can even set up your own online store. Since I launched mattdayphoto.com, I've sold my own zines, photo books, prints, and merch all through my own website, no need to use a third-party service, and they also have tons of different plugins from third parties to keep everything in one place. Keeping track of your inventory, shipping fulfillment, it's all a breeze with their built-in tools. It's never been easier to build your own website, and you can start a free trial by going to squarespace.com slash mattday. Use the promo code MATTDAY at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's going to do it for this video, so if you have any questions at all about the books mentioned here, or if you want to see any of them more in-depth in one of the Photo Book Friday episodes, or any other book that you know I've shared in the past, uh, let me know, and I'll be happy to do that. So thank you all for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon.